Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a episode on, or a video on, what does a neutral pattern mean um, for fall? And what I mean by neutral is neutral E and S O Enzo. So, uh, previous years we had an El Nino, last year we had a weak El Nino, this year is supposed to be a neutral. And what I mean by what does it mean um, for a fall? I mean like snowfall, rainfall, uh, the temperatures, everything uh, in between. So let's just get right into this. Before we do, however, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you can. I do weather videos. There's an exciting time of the year coming up for my channel. I do so much weather content. I cover just about everything from hurricanes to snowstorms, especially in the winter. I apologize, I just sneezed, and uh, that, that's why there was an interruption. But uh, consider sharing this video and liking this video with your... Uh, liking this video and consider sharing this video with your friends. So, uh, right now, sorry about the cutoff right there, but basically all you, all you need to know from this picture is that an Enzo neutral is favored to emerge in the next season and then to continue through the Northern Hemisphere fall and winter 2019-2020. <clears throat> and basically... You could see that right now we're still in an El Nino because this was updated 11th of July, so fairly recently. And you could see it says um, is favored to emerge, indicating or implying that it has not emerged yet and that it's yet to emerge. Um, we're still in an El Nino, weak El Nino phase right now, but it's definitely starting to fall apart. If we were to look at the sea surface temperatures or the sea surface anomalies, uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, we would see that an El Nino is uh, starting to fall apart and more of a in-between, which, given the name neutral, it, that's what it is. So you could see um, for the fall months, August, September, October, um, basically centered on September, centered on October, and November, all those months are all neutral, and the chances are fairly high to be neutral. Um, you can see they do have a slight chance for an El Nino. There's still the models are still fighting with that. I think I do. Okay, no, I don't. But my, um, uh, my uh, there was a slide I should have taken a picture of it. But basically, it was uh, just the models showing whether or not uh, it would be a neutral El Nino. Half of them were showing or a neutral or an El Nino. About half of them were showing a neutral, and about half of them were showing a weak El Nino. However, the, the models have been increasing more and more towards pointing a uh, towards a neutral pattern. So uh, that's important to notice. Now, what does a neutral pattern look like typically for the winter? You could see, uh, and again, winter, this is a winter pattern. This doesn't mean this is gonna happen for the fall. But, um, and basically, uh, if I didn't make this clear, basically what you need to take away from this is that a neutral pattern is going to happen this fall. So with that in mind, what will a neutral pattern bring um, for for winter? It should be something like this, since we're expecting winter as well. Um, you could see cold, wet, and warm. This produces big storms, especially if the... Sorry about that, whoa. Um, especially if the subtropical jet um, meet, meets with the polar jet stream. You could see that this wet and this wet, warm air combined with this cold air would form pretty big uh, snowstorms. I do think there will be several nor'easters this year, unlike last year. Um, for the winter, this is. But for the fall, it's fairly similar. I'll explain. So, um, I did, like, what I do best. I did a bunch of analog years, which, uh, basically, I compared what, like, I took all the neutral years that were neutral in the fall period, so September, October, November, and August. I took all of those, and, uh, I t uh, you know, August isn't fall, but I don't know why I included August in here, but it doesn't skew the, um, the actual forecast, because I'll show you month by month, they all look pretty similar. It's not like if it's one outlier that brings this whole average uh, down. So you could see fairly chilly across um, most of the eastern half of the United States. Warmer across the north uh, and, the, and the west. However, you know, that's this is fall and you can see there are some pockets of chillier air. Doesn't look ridiculously too warm across the west. Looks a tad warmer, but it looks more cooler um, in, the, in the east. It's more of a anomaly or a deviance from average in the east than it is in the west. Um, in terms of temperatures, and this is for the whole August through November, 
the whole fall period of all these neutral years which we are expected to get this year so you could see take an inference yourself from this if we were to look at august alone you could see um a chili across especially the northwest and southeast and a little bit in the north central country uh, north central us i meant to say and then you could see a little bit warmer by the pacific northwest and the Pacific West in general, and then in the monsoon area, oh, monsoon, the Four Corners area, uh, Kansas, Colorado, Arizona, well, Kansas isn't part of it, but, you know, it's just that little area um, in the southwest, and then parts of the northeast, possibly, um, a little bit warmer. We'll have to see what August brings, because if August ends up looking like this, then we will, no, we're very likely to see what's forecasted. So, we'll have to see what August brings. As of now, we don't know yet what august will bring um, it's supposed to be cooler but you know i mean we don't know really how that goes exactly it could change definitely to being warmer or uh, being hot frankly and if you look at uh september of all those years you could still see very similar especially up here this cold air is locked up there and uh it doesn't seem to want to come down but also notice it's a little bit warmer across these areas nothing too remarkable it seems uh, while some pockets of chillier air remain, mainly the east, again, is getting impacted by that cool, cold weather. Um, so, again, this would obviously, even if it was colder in September or August, that would not bring any snow. Um, unless you're by uh, J the Hudson Bay or James Bay, um, possibly some snow showers. But down in the U.S., you would have to be ridiculously cold in order for it to snow in September. Um in any area that is remotely populated because in the mountains yes we do sometimes see snow in september and i get it sometimes i think the earliest recorded times across many states for north dakota south dakota minnesota are september but it this is not a record-breaking year this is just a little bit cooler than normal so at this point september doesn't seem like to be snowy just cooler than average. October, however, you could see um, is usually when the temperatures are cool enough, so where when it's below average, even just a little bit, we could see snow, but this time around, October doesn't seem too, too awfully cold at all. And we see this cold air that retreated back even further north, and uh, it'll come back in November, I'll show you in just a minute. But notice how it gets a little bit warmer across the west, um, it's now a bigger difference than the east. You can see the east is just slightly cooler and the west is uh quite a bit warmer and if we look at november you can see notice how it spills all the way from here down into there for the next month and uh, if you were to look at december i think it would be similar this wave would come down and it's looking exciting guys i'm telling you more day for day after day this this winter is becoming looking more and more promising so you can see this is november 1950 1952 all those same years you can see pretty chilly right there pretty darn chilly um almost negative one to negative 1.5 degrees celsius which you may be like how's that chilly that's only one degree celsius Keep in mind that um, that this is over a course of many years, so to have such a difference over so many years over one time period is uh, adjusted by the color. So usually you'd see these colors for, say, a monthly composite. Um, these colors would be... Uh, or these colors would represent negative four to negative six degrees because during a month one month if you get a cooler september with one really big cold blast it could you know screw up the anomalies for the whole month and that's why they take that into account for all these years and they decrease these increments i think i've mentioned that many times before but in case you're a new viewer and you're wondering about that so uh that's basically the end okay no um this is in terms of precip i was, forgot to show you this is in terms of precipitation um you could see that it's really a little bit drier um if and this is for november because i just wanted to show you if it's going to be snowier because if it's going to snow it's only going to be in november really and the whole fall looks pretty below normal and november looked below normal not ridiculously below normal but just a bit enough i think to where the snow wouldn't you know necessarily fall in great amounts so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see y'all bye